Buddhism is a world religion, which arose in and around the ancient kingdom of Magadha now in Bihar, India, and is based on the teachings of Siddhartha Gautama who was deemed a Buddha, awakened one. Buddhism spread outside of Magadha starting in the Buddha's lifetime. With the reign of the Buddhist Mauryan Emperor Ashoka, the Buddhist community split into two branches, the Mahasamgika and the Saint Havoravada, each of which spread throughout India and split into numerous sub-sects. In modern times, two major branches of Buddhism exist, the Theravada in Sri Lanka and Southeast Asia, and the Mahayana throughout the Himalayas and East Asia. The practice of Buddhism as a distinct and organized religion lost influence after the Gupta reign c. 7th century CE, and declined from the land of its origin in around 13th century, but not without leaving a significant impact. Except for Himalayan region and South India, Buddhism almost became extinct in India after the arrival of Islam in late 12th century. Presence of Buddhism is still found in the Himalayan areas such as Sikkim, Ladakh, Arunachal Pradesh, the Darjeeling Hills in West Bengal, and the Lahal and Spiti areas of Upper Himachal Pradesh. According to the 2011 census, Buddhists make up 0.7% of India's population, or 8.4 million individuals. Traditional Buddhists are 13% and Navayana Buddhists converted or Neo -Buddhists comprise more than 87% of Indian Buddhist community according to 2011 census of India. <inaudible> Siddhartha Gautama Buddha was born in Lumbini, in Nepal, to a Kapilvasta king of the Shakya kingdom named Suddhodana. After asceticism and meditation, which was a samana practice, the Buddha discovered the Buddhist middle way a path of moderation away from the extremes of self indulgence and self mortification. Siddhartha Gautama attained enlightenment sitting under a pipal tree, now known as the Bodhi tree in Bodh Gaya, India. Gautama, from then on, was known as the perfectly self awakened one. The Samyaksambuddha. Buddha found patronage in the ruler of Magadha, Emperor Bimbisara. The emperor accepted Buddhism as personal faith and allowed the establishment of many Buddhist viharas. This eventually led to the renaming of the entire region as Bihar. At the Deer Park in Sarnath near Varanasi in northern India, Buddha set in motion the Wheel of Dharma by delivering his first sermon to the group of five companions with whom he had previously sought enlightenment. They, together with the Buddha, formed the first Sangha, the company of Buddhist monks, and hence, the first formation of Triple Gem Buddha, Dharma and Sangha was completed. For the remaining years of his life, the Buddha is said to have traveled in the Gangetic plain of northern India and other regions. Buddha died in Kushinagar, Uttar Pradesh. <laughs> Buddhists Followers of Buddhism, called Buddhists in English, referred to themselves as Sagata. Other terms were Sakyans or Sakyanheksu in ancient India. Sakyaputo was another term used by Buddhists, as well as Aryasavako and Jinaputo. Buddhist scholar Donald S. Lopez states they also used the term Bada. The scholar Richard Cohen in his discussion about the 5th century Ajanta Caves, states that Bada is not attested therein, and was used by outsiders to describe Buddhists, except for occasional use as an adjective. <laughs> <laughs> Buddhist movements The Buddha did not appoint any successor, and asked his followers to work toward liberation. The teachings of the Buddha existed only in oral traditions. The Sangha held a number of Buddhist councils in order to reach consensus on matters of Buddhist doctrine and practice. Mahakasyapa, a disciple of the Buddha, presided over the first Buddhist council held at Rajagurha. Its purpose was to recite and agree on the Buddha's actual teachings and on monastic discipline. Some scholars consider this council fictitious. The second Buddhist council is said to have taken place at Vaisali. Its purpose was to deal with questionable monastic practices like the use of money, the drinking of palm wine, and other irregularities. The council declared these practices unlawful. What is commonly called the Third Buddhist Council was held at Pataliputra, and was allegedly called by Emperor Asoka in the 3rd century BCE. Organized by the monk Magaliputta it was held in order to rid the Sangha of the large number of monks who had joined the order because of its royal patronage. Most scholars now believe this council was exclusively Theravada, and that the dispatch of missionaries to various countries at about this time was nothing to do with it. 
What is often called the Fourth Buddhist Council is generally believed to have been held under the patronage of Emperor Kaniska at Jalandhar in Kashmir, though the late Monsignor Professor Lamotte considered it fictitious. It is generally believed to have been a council of the Sarvastivada school. <laughs> Early Buddhism schools The early Buddhist schools were the various schools in which pre-sectarian Buddhism split in the first few centuries after the passing away of the Buddha in about the 5th century BCE. The earliest division was between the majority Mahasamgika and the minority Saint Havaravada. Some existing Buddhist traditions follow the Vinayas of early Buddhist schools. Theravada, practiced mainly in Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos and Bangladesh. Dharmaguptaka, followed in China, Korea, Vietnam, and Taiwan. Malasarvastavada, followed in Tibetan Buddhism. The Dharmaguptakas made more efforts than any other sect to spread Buddhism outside India, to areas such as Afghanistan, Central Asia, and China, and they had great success in doing so. Therefore, most countries which adopted Buddhism from China, also adopted the Dharmaguptaka Vinaya and ordination lineage for Bhiksus and Bhiksunis. During the early period of Chinese Buddhism, the Indian Buddhist sects recognized as important, and whose texts were studied, were the Dharmaguptakas, Mahisasakas, Kasyapayas, Sarvastivadins, and the Mahasamgikas. Complete Vinayas preserved in the Chinese Buddhist canon include the Mahisasaka Vinaya t. 1421, Mahasamgika Vinaya t. 1425, Dharmaguptaka Vinaya t. 1428, Sarvastivada Vinaya t. 1435, and the Malasarvastivada Vinaya t. 1442. Also preserved are a set of Agamas Sutra Pitaka, a complete Sarvastivada Abhidharma Pitaka, and many other texts of the early Buddhist schools. Early Buddhist schools in India often divided modes of Buddhist practice into several vehicles. Yana. For example, the Vaibhasika Sarvastivadins are known to have employed the outlook of Buddhist practice as consisting of the three vehicles Sravakayana, Pratyekabuddhayana, Bodhisattvayana. Mahayana <inaudible> 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 Several scholars have suggested that the Prajnaparamita Sutras, which are among the earliest Mahayana Sutras, developed among the Mahasamgika along the Kresna River in the Andhra region of South India. The earliest Mahayana Sutras to include the very first versions of the Prajnaparamita genre, along with texts concerning Aksobhya Buddha, which were probably written down in the 1st century BCE in the south of India. Guang Xing states. Several scholars have suggested that the Prajnaparamita probably developed among the Mahasamgikas in southern India, in the Andhra country, on the Kresna River. A.K. Warder believes that, the Mahayana originated in the south of India and almost certainly in the Andhra country. Anthony Barber and Sri Padma note that. Historians of Buddhist thought have been aware for quite some time that such pivotally important Mahayana Buddhist thinkers as Nagarjuna, Dignaga, Kendrakirti, Aryadeva, and Bhavavivaka, among many others, formulated their theories while living in Buddhist communities in Andhra. They note that the ancient Buddhist sites in the lower Kresna Valley, including Amaravati, Nagarjunakanda, and Jagayaita, can be traced to at least the 3rd century BCE, if not earlier. Akira Hirakawa notes the "...evidence suggests that many early Mahayana scriptures originated in South India." <inaudible> Vajrayana Various classes of Vajrayana literature developed as a result of royal courts sponsoring both Buddhism and Savism. The Manjusri Mulakalpa, which later came to classified under Kriyatantra, states that mantras taught in the Shaiva, Garuda and Vaishnava tantras will be effective if applied by Buddhists since they were all taught originally by Manjushri. The Guyasati of Padmavajra, a work associated with the Guyasamaha tradition, prescribes acting as a Shaiva guru and initiating members into Saiva Siddhanta scriptures and mandalas. The Samvara Tantra texts adopted the Pitha list from the Shaiva text Tantrasadbhava, introducing a copying error where a deity was mistaken for a place. <laughs> <laughs> Strengthening of Buddhism in India <laughs> The early spread of Buddhism 
During the 6th and 5th centuries BCE before Common Era, commerce and cash became increasingly important in an economy previously dominated by self-sufficient production and bartered exchange. Merchants found Buddhist moral and ethical teachings an attractive alternative to the esoteric rituals of the traditional Brahmin priesthood, which seemed to cater exclusively to Brahmin interests while ignoring those of the new and emerging social classes. Furthermore, Buddhism was prominent in communities of merchants, who found it well suited to their needs and who increasingly established commercial links throughout the Mauryan Empire. Merchants proved to be an efficient vector of the Buddhist faith, as they established diaspora communities in the string of oasis towns Merv, Bukhara, Samarkand, Kashgar, Khotan, Kuka, Turpan, Dunhuang, that served as lifeline of the Silk Roads through Central Asia. Ahsoka and the Mauryan Empire The Maurya Empire reached its peak at the time of Emperor Ahsoka, who converted to Buddhism after the Battle of Kalinga. This heralded a long period of stability under the Buddhist emperor. The power of the empire was vast. Ambassadors were sent to other countries to propagate Buddhism. Greek envoy Megasthenes describes the wealth of the Mauryan capital. Stupas, pillars and edicts on stone remain at Sanchi, Sarnath and Mathura, indicating the extent of the empire. Emperor Ahsoka the Great 304 BCE to 232 BCE was the ruler of the Maurya Empire from 273 BCE to 232 BCE. Ahsoka reigned over most of India after a series of military campaigns. Emperor Ahsoka's kingdom stretched from South Asia and beyond, from present-day parts of Afghanistan in the north and Baluchistan in the west, to Bengal and Assam in the east, and as far south as Mysore. According to legend, Emperor Ahsoka was overwhelmed by guilt after the conquest of Kalinga, following which he accepted Buddhism as personal faith with the help of his Brahmin mentors Radhasvami and Manjusri. Ahsoka established monuments marking several significant sites in the life of Sakyamuni Buddha, and according to Buddhist tradition was closely involved in the preservation and transmission of Buddhism. <laughs> Greco-Bactrians, Sakas and Indo-Parthians. Menander was the most famous Bactrian king. He ruled from Taxila and later from Sagala He rebuilt Taxila and Paskalavati. He became Buddhist and is remembered in Buddhists' records due to his discussions with a great Buddhist philosopher in the book Melinda Panha. By 90 BC, Parthians took control of eastern Iran and around 50 BC put an end to last remnants of Greek rule in Afghanistan. By around 7 AD, an Indo Parthian dynasty succeeded in taking control of Gandhara. Parthians continued to support Greek artistic traditions in Gandhara. The start of the Gandharan Greco Buddhist art is dated to the period between 50 BC and 75 AD. <laughs> Kusana Empire The Kushan Empire under Emperor Kandaska ruled the strongly Buddhist region of Gandhara as well as other parts of northern India, Afghanistan and Pakistan. Kushan rulers were supporters of Buddhist institutions, and built numerous stupas and monasteries. During this period, Gandharan Buddhism spread through the trade routes protected by the Kushans, out through the Khyber Pass into Central Asia. Gandharan Buddhist art styles also spread outward from Gandhara to other parts of Asia. The Pala and Sena era Under the rule of the Pala and Sena kings, large Mahaviharas flourished in what is now Bihar and Bengal. According to Tibetan sources, five great Mahaviharas stood out, Vikramashila, the premier university of the era, Nalanda, past its prime but still illustrious, Samapura, Odantapura, and Jagadala. The five monasteries formed a network. All of them were under state supervision and there existed a system of coordination among them, it seems from the evidence that the different seats of Buddhist learning that functioned in eastern India under the Pala were regarded together as forming a network, an interlinked group of institutions." And it was common for great scholars to move easily from position to position among them. According to Damien Keown, the kings of the Pala dynasty, 8th to 12th century, Gangetic Plains region, were a major supporter of Buddhism, various Buddhist and Hindu arts, and the flow of ideas between India, Tibet, and China. 
During this period, Pala dynasty Mahayana Buddhism reached its zenith of sophistication, while Tantric Buddhism flourished throughout India and surrounding lands. This was also a key period for the consolidation of the epistemological logical pramana school of Buddhist philosophy. Apart from the many foreign pilgrims who came to India at this time, especially from China and Tibet, there was a smaller but important flow of Indian pandits who made their way to Tibet. <laughs> Dharma masters Indian ascetics SKT, Sramana, propagated Buddhism in various regions, including East Asia and Central Asia. In the Edicts of Ashoka, Ashoka mentions the Hellenistic kings of the period as a recipient of his Buddhist proselytism. The Mahavamsa describes emissaries of Ashoka, such as Dharmaraksita, as leading Greek Yona Buddhist monks, active in Buddhist proselytism. Roman historical accounts describe an embassy sent by the Indian King Pandian Pandya, also named Porus, to Caesar Augustus around the 1st century. The embassy was travelling with a diplomatic letter in Greek, and one of its members was a Sramana who burned himself alive in Athens, to demonstrate his faith. The event made a sensation and was described by Nicolaus of Damascus, who met the embassy at Antioch, and related by Strabo 15, 1, and Dio Cassius Liv. 9. A tomb was made to the Sramana, still visible in the time of Plutarch, which bore the mention. The Sramana master from Baragaza in India. Lokaksima is the earliest known Buddhist monk to have translated Mahayana Buddhist scriptures into the Chinese language. Gandharan monks Nyanagupta and Prajna contributed through several important translations of Sanskrit sutras into Chinese language. The Indian Dhyana master Buddhabhadra was the founding abbot and patriarch of the Shaolin Temple. Buddhist monk and esoteric master from South India 6th century, Kanchipuram is regarded as the patriarch of the Tilun school. Bodhidharma c. 6th century was the Buddhist bhikkhu traditionally credited as the founder of Zen Buddhism in China. In 580, Indian monk Vinataruchi traveled to Vietnam. This, then, would be the first appearance of Vietnamese Zen, or Thien Buddhism. Pamamsambhava, in Sanskrit meaning, lotus born is said to have brought Tantric Buddhism to Tibet in the 8th century. In Bhutan and Tibet he is better known as Guru Rinpoche, Precious Master, where followers of the Nyingma school regard him as the second Buddha. Santaraksita, abbot of Nalanda and founder of the Yogacara Madhyamaka is said to have helped Pamamsambhava establish Buddhism in Tibet. Indian monk Atisa, holder of the mind training Tib. Lojong teachings, is considered an indirect founder of the Gelug school of Tibetan Buddhism. Indian monks, such as Varabodhi, also travelled to Indonesia to propagate Buddhism. <laughs> <laughs> Decline of Buddhism in India The decline of Buddhism has been attributed to various factors. Regardless of the religious beliefs of their kings, states usually treated all the important sects relatively even-handedly. This consisted of building monasteries and religious monuments, donating property such as the income of villages for the support of monks, and exempting donated property from taxation. Donations were most often made by private persons such as wealthy merchants and female relatives of the royal family, but there were periods when the state also gave its support and protection. In the case of Buddhism, this support was particularly important because of its high level of organization and the reliance of monks on donations from the laity. State patronage of Buddhism took the form of land grant foundations. Numerous copper plate inscriptions from India as well as Tibetan and Chinese texts suggest that the patronage of Buddhism and Buddhist monasteries in medieval India was interrupted in periods of war and political change, but broadly continued in Hindu kingdoms from the start of the Common Era through early 2nd millennium CE. Modern scholarship and recent translations of Tibetan and Sanskrit Buddhist text archives, preserved in Tibetan monasteries, suggest that through much of 1st millennium CE in medieval India and Tibet as well as other parts of China, Buddhist monks owned property and were actively involved in trade and other economic activity. After joining a Buddhist monastery, with the Gupta dynasty, tilde 4th to 6th century, the growth in ritualistic Mahayana Buddhism, mutual influence between Hinduism and Buddhism, the differences between Buddhism and Hinduism blurred, and Vaishnavism, Shaivism and other Hindu traditions became increasingly popular, and Brahmins developed a new relationship with the state. As the system grew, Buddhist monasteries gradually lost control of land revenue. 
In parallel, the Gupta kings built Buddhist temples such as the one at Kashinagara, and monastic universities such as those at Nalanda, as evidenced by records left by three Chinese visitors to India. According to Hazra, Buddhism declined in part because of the rise of the Brahmins and their influence in socio-political process. According to Randall Collins, Richard Gombrich and other scholars, Buddhism's rise or decline is not linked to Brahmins or the caste system, since Buddhism was not a reaction to the caste system. But aimed at the salvation of those who joined its monastic order, the 11th century Persian traveller Al Biruni writes that there was cordial hatred between the Brahmins and Sramana Buddhists. Buddhism was also weakened by rival Hindu philosophies such as Advaita Vedanta, growth in temples, and an innovation of the Bhakti movement. Advaita Vedanta proponent Adi Shankara is believed to have defeated Buddhism and established Hindu supremacy. This rivalry undercut Buddhist patronage and popular support. The period between 400 CE and 1000 CE thus saw gains by the Vedanta school of Hinduism over Buddhism and Buddhism had vanished from Afghanistan and North India by early 11th century. India was now Brahmanic, not Buddhistic. Al-Biruni could never find a Buddhistic book or a Buddhist person in India from whom he could learn. According to some scholars such as Lars Fogelin, the decline of Buddhism may be related to economic reasons, wherein the Buddhist monasteries with large land grants focused on non-material pursuits, self-isolation of the monasteries, loss in internal discipline in the Sangha, and a failure to efficiently operate the land they owned. Topic: The Hun Invasions. Chinese scholars traveling through the region between the 5th and 8th centuries, such as Faxian, Zanzong, I Ching, Wei Sheng, and Sung Yun, began to speak of a decline of the Buddhist Sangha, especially in the wake of the Hun invasion from Central Asia. Zanzong, the most famous of Chinese travelers, found millions of monasteries in northwestern India reduced to ruins by the Huns. <laughs> Turkish Muslim conquerors The Muslim conquest of the Indian subcontinent was the first great iconoclastic invasion into South Asia. By the end of 12th century, Buddhism had mostly disappeared, with the destruction of monasteries and stupas in medieval northwest and western India now Pakistan and North India, in the northwestern parts of medieval India, the Himalayan regions, as well regions bordering Central Asia, Buddhism once facilitated trade relations, states Lars Fogelin. With the Islamic invasion and expansion, and Central Asians adopting Islam, the trade route derived financial support sources and the economic foundations of Buddhist monasteries declined, on which the survival and growth of Buddhism was based. The arrival of Islam removed the royal patronage to the monastic tradition of Buddhism, and the replacement of Buddhists in long distance trade by the Muslims eroded the related sources of patronage. In the Gangetic Plains, Orissa, northeast, and the southern regions of India, Buddhism survived through the early centuries of the second millennium CE. The Islamic invasion plundered wealth and destroyed Buddhist images, and consequent takeover of land holdings of Buddhist monasteries removed one source of necessary support for the Buddhists, while the economic upheaval and new taxes on laity sapped the laity support of Buddhist monks. Monasteries and institutions such as Nalanda were abandoned by Buddhist monks around 1200 CE, who flee to escape the invading Muslim army, after which the site decayed over the Islamic rule in India that followed. The last empire to support Buddhism, the Pala dynasty, fell in the 12th century, and Muslim invaders destroyed monasteries and monuments. According to Randall Collins, Buddhism was already declining in India before the 12th century, but with the pillage by Muslim invaders it nearly became extinct in India in the 1200s. In the 13th century, states Craig Lockard, Buddhist monks in India escaped to Tibet to escape Islamic persecution, while the monks in western India, states Peter Harvey, escaped persecution by moving to South Indian Hindu kingdoms that were able to resist the Muslim power. Surviving Buddhists Many Indian Buddhists fled south. It is known that Buddhists continued to exist in India even after the 14th century from texts such as the Chaitanya Charitamrita. This text outlines an episode in the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 1486-1533, a Vaisnava saint, who was said to have entered into a debate with Buddhists in Tamil Nadu. The Tibetan Taranatha 1575-1634 wrote a history of Indian Buddhism, which mentions Buddhism as having survived in some pockets of India during his time. 
He mentions the Buddhist Sang as having survived in Konkana, Kalinga, Mawad, Chittor, Abu, Saurastra, Vindhya Mountains, Ritnagira, Karnataka etc. A Jain author Ganakirti wrote a Marathi text, Dhamramrita, where he gives the names of sixteen Buddhist orders. Dr. Joraparkar noted that among them, the names Satagare, Dongare, Navagare, Kavishvar, Vasanik, and Aichchabhojanik still survive in Maharashtra as family names. Buddhism also survived to the modern era in the Himalayan regions such as Ladakh, with close ties to Tibet. A unique tradition survives in Nepal's Nuar Buddhism. Abul Fazl, the courtier of Mughal Emperor Akbar, states, For a long time past scarce any trace of them the Buddhists has existed in Hindustan. When he visited Kashmir in 1597 he met with a few old men professing Buddhism, however he saw none among the learned. This is can also be seen from the fact that Buddhist priests were not present amidst learned divines that came to the Abadat Khana of Akbar at Fatehpur Sikri. Topic. Causes within the Buddhist tradition of the time Some scholars suggest that a part of the decline of Buddhist monasteries was because it was detached from everyday life in India and did not participate in the ritual social aspects such as the rites of passage marriage, funeral, birth of child like other religions. Topic. Revival of Buddhism in India The modern revival of Buddhism in India began in the late 19th century, led by Buddhist modernist institutions such as the Maha Bodhi Society 1891, the Bengal Buddhist Association 1892, and the Young Men's Buddhist Association 1898. These institutions were influenced by modernist South Asian Buddhist currents such as Sri Lankan Buddhist modernism as well as Western Oriental scholarship and spiritual movements like Theosophy. A central figure of this movement was Sri Lankan Buddhist leader Anagarika Dharmapala, who founded the Maha Bodhi Society in 1891. An important focus of the Maha Bodhi Society's activities in India became the recovery, conservation and restoration of important Buddhist sites, such as Bodh Gaya and its Mahabodhi Temple. Dharmapala and the society promoted the building of Buddhist viharas and temples in India, including the one at Sarnath, the place of Buddha's first sermon. He died in 1933, the same year he was ordained a bhikkhu. Following Indian independence, India's ancient Buddhist heritage became an important element for nation building, and Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru looked to the Mauryan Empire for symbols of pan Indian unity, which were neither Hindu nor Muslim, such as the Dharmakakra. Indian Buddhist sites also received Indian government support in preparation for the 2500th Buddha Janti held in 1956, as well as providing rent-free land in several pilgrimage centers for Asian Buddhist groups to build temples and rest houses. Important Indian Buddhist intellectuals of the modern period include Rahul Sankratiyan (1893–1963), Dharmanan Kosambi (1876–1941), and Bhadant Anand Kosalyan. The Bengal Buddhist Kripasaran Mahasthavir (1865–1926) founded the Bengal Buddhist Association in 1892. In Tamil Nadu, the Tamil Ayyadi Thas (1845–1914) was a major figure who promoted Buddhism and called the pariahs to convert. The Indian government and the states have continued to promote the development of Buddhist pilgrimage sites. The Buddhist Circuit. Both as a source of tourism and as a promotion of India's Buddhist heritage which is an important cultural resource for India's foreign diplomatic ties. Another recent development is the establishment of the new Nalanda University in Bihar 2010. <laughs> <laughs> Dalit Buddhist movement In the 1950s, the Dalit political leader B. R. Ambedkar (1891–1956), influenced by his reading of Pali sources and Indian Buddhists like Dharmanand Kosambi and Lakshmi Narasu, began promoting conversion to Buddhism for Indian low caste Dalits. His Dalit Buddhist movement was most successful in the Indian states of Maharashtra, which saw large-scale conversions. Ambedkar's Neo Buddhism included a strong element of social and political protest against Hinduism and the Indian caste system. His magnum opus, The Buddha and His Dhamma, incorporated Marxist ideas of class struggle into Buddhist views of dukkha and argued that Buddhist morality could be used to "...reconstruct society and to build up a modern, progressive society of justice, equality, and freedom." 
The conversion movement has generally been limited to certain social demographics, such as the Maher caste of Maharashtra and the Jadavs. Although they have renounced Hinduism in practice, a community survey showed adherence to many practices of the old faith including endogamy, worshipping the traditional family deity etc. A major organization of this movement is the Triratna Bada Mahasangha. Tibetan Buddhism Tibetan Buddhism has also grown in India during the modern era, mainly due to the growth of the Tibetan diaspora. The arrival of the 14th Dalai Lama with over 85,000 Tibetan refugees 1959 had a significant impact on the revival of Buddhism in India. Large numbers of Tibetans settled in Dharamsala, Himachal Pradesh, which became the headquarters of the Tibetan government in exile. Another large Tibetan refugee settlement is in Bailakape, Karnataka. Tibetan refugees also contributed to the revitalization of the Buddhist traditions in Himalayan regions such as Lahal and Spiti district, Ladakh, Tawang and Bomdila. Tibetan Buddhists have also contributed to the building of temples and institutions in the Buddhist sites and ruins of India. The Dalai Lama's brother, Gyalo Thandup, himself lives in Kalimpong and his wife established the Tibetan Refugee Center in Darjeeling 1. The 17th Karmapa also arrived in India in 2000 and continues education and has taken traditional role to head Karma Kagyu sect of Tibetan Buddhism and every year leads the Kagyu Monlam in Bodh Gaya attended by thousands of monks and followers. Palpung Sherabaling Monastery seat of the 12th Thai Siddhupa located in Kangra, Himachal Pradesh is the largest Kagyu monastery in India and has become an important center of Tibetan Buddhism. Panor Rinpoche, the head of Nyingma, the ancient school of Tibetan Buddhism re-established a Nyingma monastery in Bailakape, Mysore. This is the largest Nyingma monastery today. Monks from Himalayan regions of India, Nepal, Bhutan and from Tibet join this monastery for their higher education. Panor Rinpoche also founded Tubton Lekshi Ling, a Dharma center for lay practitioners in Bangalore. Vajrayana Buddhism and Dzogchen Maha Sandhi meditation again became accessible to aspirants in India after that. Topic: <inaudible> Vipassana movement. The Vipassana movement is a modern tradition of Buddhist meditation practice. In India, the most influential Vipassana organization is the Vipassana Research Institute, founded by S. N. Goenka who promoted Buddhist vipassana meditation in a modern and non-sectarian manner. Goenka's network of meditation centers who offered 10-day retreats. Many institutions—both government and private sector—now offer courses for their employees. This form is mainly practiced by elite and middle-class Indians. This movement has spread to many other countries in Europe, America and Asia. In November 2008, the construction of the Global Vipassana Pagoda was completed on the outskirts of Mumbai. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Status in India. According to the 2011 census of India, there are 8.4 million Buddhists in India, but Buddhist leaders claim there are about 50 to 60 million Buddhists in India. Maharashtra has the highest number of Buddhists in India, with 5.81% of the total population. Almost 90% of Navayana or Neo-Buddhists live in the state. In the 1951 census of India, 1.81 lakh respondents said they were Buddhist. The 1961 census, taken after B. R. Ambedkar adopted Navayana Buddhism with his millions of followers in 1956, showed an increase to 3.2 million Census of India, 2011 See also Religion in India Buddhist pilgrimage sites in India Topic Notes Topic References Topic Further reading Dutt, Nalinaksha 1998 Buddhist sects in India New Delhi, Mudalal Banarsidass, ISBN 81-208-0427-9. Elst, K. 2002. 
Who is a Hindu? Hindu revivalist views of animism, Buddhism, Sikhism, and other offshoots of Hinduism. New Delhi, Voice of India. Mary Pat Fisher 2008. Living Religions, 7th edition, ISBN 0-13614-105-6. Klaus Klostermeyer 1999, Buddhism, A Short Introduction, ISBN 978-1-85168-186-0. Lamott, E. 1976. History of Indian Buddhism. Louvain, Peters Press. Swaroop, Ram. 1984. Buddhism vis a vis Hinduism. Topic. External links. World Civilizations: The Decline of Buddhism in India. Publisher: Washington State University. Last accessed on April 10, 2007.